<laughs> Praise the Lord for setting me free. Amen? Amen. Come on, one more time. Give him thanks. Amen. It's because of him, it's because of him that you are healthy enough to grace those chairs today. Amen? He gave you breath this morning. Clearly, you guys are eating some of you better than me. But he made it so that you could get here safely today. As D Pastor David said, I am Pastor Dan Hudson, lead pastor at Bethel Northside, where Pastor Steve is down preaching at. I used to go to church here four years ago, and Pastor Steve, you guys know Pastor John Gentile? Pastor Steve kicked me and John Gentile out. He kicked us out. He sent Pastor John to Saratoga, gave him a church, kicked me out, sent me to Inner City Schenectady, gave me a church. And then when I come home, daddy is gone. <laughs> Crazy, right? Pastor Steve is an awesome dude, and I, and I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity, come on now, to come home, to come home in good health and in good mind and in good spirit so that God can use me to deliver a word. You know that when you go before the Lord and you say, here I am, Lord, send me, you agree to when you give yourself up to do any and everything that he's called you to do. You know that? Amen. How many of you, I want to see a raise of hands. How many of you are willing to do whatever the Lord tells you to do? Keep them up. Raise them high. I need to see them high. Get them up high. Higher. Dude right here is like, nope. He knows a setup is coming. <laughs> At Northside, we have 39,840 square feet. I got a whole lot of bathrooms I need cleaning. <laughs> Y'all said, here I am, Lord, send to me. Come to Northside and clean a bathroom. Amen? <laughs> how, do you, how many know that the Lord will set you up? He will set you up so that you can be successful in any and everything that you do. I got to address these brothers right here in the front row from Albany Teen Challenge. All right? <laughs> I am, I am 56 years old. I know you're saying, bro, you look 17. I know you're saying that. <laughs> they are. Shake your head and say, I'm saying that. I started drinking and drugging when I was 18 years old. I stayed in the wilderness till I was 36. May 26, this just passed few months, I celebrated 19 years clean and sober. <laughs> If you say, if you say, here I am, Lord, send me, be ready for a roller coaster, but you will love the end result. There is hope. I'm here to encourage you. Find some people and gather some people around you that love Jesus, that love Jesus, and listen, amen? For the past six weeks, we have been in, in the series, um, Heroes and Sidekicks. Who's the ultimate hero? Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Who are the sidekicks? <laughs> You're all so humble. We are, we are? Maybe? Yeah. Jesus is the hero, and we are the sidekicks. We have talked about Ananias in week one, Naaman's wife's maid in week two. We talked about King Josiah, and we talked about Caleb. Now, I like to stop on Caleb, and I like to stop on Micaiah. Here's why. Now, remember Caleb and jo Joshua and, and the other ten spies, so there were 12 spies, all in all. They went to spy, and then they came back, and Caleb and Joshua gave a good report. They said, listen, we can take that land. And the other 10 were like, nah, man, we can't do it. So when Caleb and Joshua put their feet down and says, yes, we can, yes, we can, those other men and the other, other Israelites, they stoned them, right? So what I'm saying here is that 
when you speak goodness, when you say that you can do to other people what the Lord has shown you you can do, there's going to be some people that stone you. There's going to be some people that don't like you. Watch this. This goes for you guys and all of you. Caleb spent 40 years in the wilderness, right? Caleb, Joshua, and the other Israelites. 40 years going around this big circle. Do you know why? They spent, I spent 18 years in the wilderness drinking and drugging because of the people that I was associated and connected to. Joshua spent 40 years in the wilderness because of the people he was connected to. You've got to surround yourself with people that are doing better things, with people who are focused, with people who love Jesus, with people that will encourage you and hold you accountable to do the right thing. Amen? Amen. All right, I got to get back to my sermon part. <laughs> Micaiah, 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 the big mouth. Right? He didn't have a big mouth. He stayed stern. He wasn't afraid to be hated. He wasn't afraid to speak the word of the Lord. And when he spoke the word of the Lord to King Ahab, the guy that brought him down, what happened? You remember what happened? What did the Bible say happened? I know Pastor Steve preached this last week. What happened if you were here? Before that, what happened? You know. The guy slapped him. Remember? Remember when Micaiah said, I see all of Israel. Because Ahab said, there is still a prophet who is hanging around, but he only speaks bad of me. Never good. So when they went and got Micaiah from prison and brought him to speak, he said, I see all of Israel scattered on the hill. And there is no commander for the sheep. And the guy who had gone and got him out of jail, the Bible says that he slapped Micaiah in the face and then he mocked Micaiah and says, the Lord didn't tell you I was going to smack you? Basically, right? But he stood firm. He doubled down. You are called to double down. When people attack you, when people smack you, when you speak the word of the Lord, you are called to double down. You are going to be attacked. I need you to understand that. Amen? Don't be surprised when they slap you. But our series verse for this entire series, and I believe there are a couple of more weeks, is Ephesians 2 and it's 10 and 10. It says this. It says, for we are his workmanship, his masterpiece, right? Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. God knew and created pre you, before you, before your, before your daddy, Saw your mama walking in them high heels and that miniskirt before the twinkle in his eye. God had a plan for you to do good works in the name of Christ. It's already, it's in your DNA. If you are created in the image of God, that means that it's in your what? It's in my DNA. It runs from my blood. It runs through my blood. That's why the enemy is attacking you guys at a crazy rate. That's why he was attacking me, because you're supposed to be here. You're supposed to be telling people how great Jesus is. That's why the attack is so great. Read the end of the book. He wins. You win. You win. You stay stuck on God, and you see what will happen. I got to keep going, right? Now, this scripture, I believe, the, the Ephesians 2 and 10, this scripture, I believe, believe, is the best speaking directly to our purpose in life. You were created to do good things in the name of Jesus Christ. We've been talking about the lesser known heroes or the lesser known sidekicks of the Bible. And today we're going to talk about this lady. And I want to see a show of hands um, because don't tell them, please don't tell them. But when I asked this question, nobody in first service raised their hand. <laughs> I want you to be honest, too, because I'll call, I'll put you on the spot. That's how I get out. I'm just letting you know. We're going to talk about Lois. 
today. Here comes. You hear that baby say, "Uh uh-oh. You heard that, right? It wasn't me. How many of you have read the story of Lois in the Bible? Raise your hand. Thanks, Ben. Is Ben the only one? Is Ben the only one? There's probably 200 people, 250 people in here. So 249 people have not read the story of Lois. Only one has. I don't believe you. I'm not tricking you. How many of you have read the story of Lois? Raise your hand. There you go. Two more. Anyway. Now, Lois in the background, the gospel of Christ was spreading all over the known world. Things were written down for posterity and historical reference. The greatest minds that had ever walked the earth were at this time when all of these writings were put together. This was not some island in the middle of the ocean or Iceland, for goodness sake. This was Asia Minor. This was Jerusalem. This was Israel. This was the center of it all. All these great minds, they gather, and they all write down some stuff, They all have some kind of historical value. They all say this, and they all say that. The point is, largely, most of the church, in my opinion, knows zero about recorded history. Jesus' life and death and resurrection, it all happened in an area of great nobility and recordings. Yet, We don't know much about it. A few of us have picked up a word or two, but how many of us have really studied the Bible? I am not here to get on y'all today. We are going to talk about Lois. I just feel the need to tell people, encourage people, pick up your word. Pick up your word. How many of you sleep eight hours a night? Seven hours. Six hours. How many of you get a good night's sleep? How many of you snore? How many of you snore and drool? (laughs) That means that you are sleeping real good. You can take 10 or 15 minutes in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, or at night, and read a chapter. Amen? Amen? Lord, if it be you, Call for me. Lord, if it be you, give me the will to read your word. Because we have a responsibility, and, 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 and by us talking about and reading about and preaching about Lois today, we're going to see what our responsibility is. The story comes out of 1 Timothy 1, verses 1 and 2, and it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. A little background here. Paul is writing Timothy, And he's writing Timothy while he is incarcerated, right? Now, when we go to this next part of Scripture, it's going to show that Paul recognizes and realizes that he is close to death, that this is the time, his time, his end is near. But he's saying, Timothy, I'm writing you this letter so that, and and I'm coming to you through Christ Jesus. I long to see your smile. I long to see your hug because I know that you love Jesus and you are taking this word with you. You have to surround yourself with people who you know love Jesus because those are the people who you will seek out when you get to that rough part in your life and they will bring a smile to your face 
no matter how fast the roller coaster is going down, you will smile because you know that they share in your journey with you. They share your faith with you. They share your love and joy for Jesus, for God, and for what his will is in your life. What we're going to talk about today is Lois and legacy. What does your legacy of faith look like? What does your legacy of faith look like? When times get rough, what do you do? You call daddy? You call mama? I have all of you on speed dial, so when you call me, I don't answer. What goes on when your faith is tested? Do you believe that faith, your faith, is supposed to test you? Here, don't answer that out loud because you might say no. I need you to understand this. A faith that has not been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. You can't show me how to get out the valley. You've never been there, right? How can I tell a financier what the best move is in the market? Right? A faith that has not been tested is a faith that, can, that cannot be trusted. Why? Because when you get to that hard spot, you're going to collapse. If your faith has never been tested, if you've never been through anything so dramatic, so hard that had you looking up, looking up, get me now, looking up, you were so low in life that you were looking up at the basement floor. Come on. That's low. See, that'll test your faith. But when Jesus, but when Jesus, see, I'll be, I talk so much, right? Point at me and say, you talk so much. <laughs> Nobody did. Are you lucky? Because I was going to come down there. <laughs> <laughs> Lois was a grandmother. Some of the things that I've heard grandmothers say over the years is, pray like heck for them kids. Pray for them boys, because those boys are rotten. Pray for those girls, because they just, whew. They would proclaim blessings over their grandchildren's lives. I've heard grandmothers proclaim blessings over their children's friends' lives. I've heard grandmothers pray for other mothers, for single mothers, for single fathers, for grandfathers. Do you know any grandmothers? Do you know any grandfathers that have bent their knee to make sure that they cover you? The name Lois means superior or most desirable. The Bible says that Lois had such a, such a sincere faith about her. I'm going to get to this scripture so that you see what I'm talking about. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Timothy. Uh, we're going to read one verse, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Say, I got it when I got it. Say, I got it when I got it. It's on the screens, right? Sin, you should all have it. <laughs> it says this. It says, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, conscience, as I remember you in my prayers day and night. As I remember your tears, when I, remem when I remember your tears of what you're going through, I long to see you again, that I may or might be filled with joy. It says, I am reminded of your sincere faith 
I am reminded of your sincere faith. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame, make it hot, make it hot, fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. Here it is, Paul, destined to physical death, is writing Timothy, telling him to fan into flame the gift of God that he gave him or left him with the laying in on of hands. Now, let me give you the definition, if I can, of sincere. There is a multitude of definitions of sincere. One of them being is without hypocrisy. Her faith was without hypocrisy. She didn't say one thing and did another. She didn't say, hallelujah, Lord, thank you, and then go shoot the neighbor. Guiltless, without guile, true, genuine, free from dissimulation, free of adulteration. Those are some of the definitions for sincere. Now, Paul says, Timothy, you got this sincere faith in you. You got this, this faith in you that is without hypocrisy. You got it from your grandmother and your mama. Picture this. I don't know what year it is. I wasn't there. Lois. Eunice. Living amongst three million Jews. Practicing Christianity in a time when women were nothing. Paul says, Timothy, you have the sincere faith in you that your grandmother had that she passed on to you. Understand this. Everything that you do will be handed down from generation to generation, whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether it be finances, whether it be a home, your attitudes, your behaviors, everything that you do is going to be handed down to somebody. Somebody is always looking. Those in your household, hmm, addiction, handed down. Handed down. I was going to buy my mother ounces of weed. Not buy. She'd pay for it. I have to go pick it up when I was 10 and 11 years old. Go down to Oscar house. He got a package for me. Hand it down. It's not my mother's, not my mother's fault. It's not my mother's fault. I chose to stay in the wilderness after that. I chose to get hooked and stay out there for 18 years, right? But I was exposed to it when I tell you that those things that you do will be handed down to the, there's a scripture and I'm gonna get there. It says, your children's children's children. Your children's children's children. It ain't about you. What legacy? See, we're talking about Lois's legacy. It said that she had a sincere faith. Sincere faith. Do you know how strong she had to be? Living amongst three million Jews? Do you know how she had to put her feet down? Do you notice that she probably for a little while had to, keep, had to keep it secret for fear of death? We're in 2023. We can yell Jesus all we want. Ain't nobody shoot us. We're in the U.S. Praise God. I'm grateful to be in the U.S. Right? Come on now. Huh? We don't recognize or realize how good we got it, but we got a responsibility. Now, with every superhero on every sidekick, usually there is, yeah, there's some villains, but there's some superpowers, right? How many of you, either of y'all, oh, I, I can, I can, I know I can make fun of him. I mean, I, stand up. Yeah, man. <laughs> Picture Ben in blue tights and a red, in a red biker suit <laughs> with a cape, right? Superhero. 
We all have kryptonites, but we all have superpowers, right? I've known Ben for a minute now, 11 years, right? Is it, you were a clean sober? How long are you clean sober? 11. 11 years? Yeah. He cleaned us over 11 years. Amen. <laughs> right? But you know what his superpower is? You know what it is? I'll tell you. It's serving. It's serving. Him and his wife serve here. Him and his wife serve other places. He wants to start a, 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 a clinical rehab group over at my church. Service is his superpower. Let me show you what Lois' superpower was. Number one is be an example of faith. She had faith. It said she had a sincere faith, right? Remember, all these things are going to get passed down to your children. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart. Teach your children the Bible. Amen. Teach. You can't go wrong. Listen, it said, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when, even when he is old, he will not depart. We'll go out, we'll make a veer, we'll do whatever we do, right? Because we all go through some, a whole lot of us stray, yes? How many of you, you know, all y'all came from heaven, right? You all, you, you all know that you're, you're the image of God, you were sent here by God, blah, 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 blah. How many of you got here and it strayed some part of your life? See, that's what happens. But when, when old, you know what old means? Mature. Train up a child when he is old and when he, well, when he is young and when he matures. When he matures. When he gets so old. No, nah, not necessarily. But when he is mentally capable of recognizing and realizes, and recognizing and realizing where he has fallen short, he'll get on track and he won't depart. You have an opportunity to get on track and not depart. But you have to surround yourself with people and be strong so that God can impart in you and in the people around you what he wants you to do. It's all by choice. Teach the word of God to your children and your grandchildren. Teach them that a faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. Teach them that that Jesus said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Show them how to push through and push on. You have to show them how to, don't get me wrong, I ain't Jesus. Show them how to turn the other cheek. I don't mean physically getting punched in the face and being like, go ahead, bro, hit me again. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is Lois. Lois. Her and Eunice, around three million Jewish people who was dead center in the middle of Judaism, not practicing the Jewish traditions. Timothy didn't get circumcised the eighth day. You had all these people coming against them, yet she had and was an example of faith. Lord, you will protect me if I stay in your word. If you, I do what you told me to do, dear Lord, you got me. She was an example of faith. You and I, how many people in the world? Eight billion? Ten billion? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Remember that? Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> you younger folks won't get that, but anyway. As grandparents and parents... We often ponder the impact that our lives will have on our children and grandchildren. And we hope that our lives will have a transformative influence. Not just with our children and grandchildren, but to those people that they go out and influence in the future. What you do, how you live, when you bend your knee, what you say, somebody, especially those in your household, are always watching. Have you considered the vast world that Lois 
this single mother, this single grandmother, and Eunice, have you considered the vast world, the community, the territory that they were surrounded by? Now, there's not much known about Lois other than she had this sincere faith that she passed down because her name is only mentioned in there once. But for Paul to write about it, to say, wow, lady, you were, yeah, wow, lady. He probably said it just like that. Wow, lady. For, for you to be surrounded by all those people and put your feet down and stick to the guns and influence in, in your household, in your household, right? And influence your daughter who ultimately influenced my grandson who ultimately influenced the world. Why? Because he was Paul's number two. Do you understand what you do, what you instill in your children and your grandchildren and your neighbors and your neighbor's kids has the potential to affect the generations to come? We're talking about 3,000 years ago, right? No, we're talking about uh, 2,000 years, 23 with a quarter of the time, right? So we're talking about at least that long, and here it is, how many generations is that? that we're still talking about Lois and Timothy? Generations upon generations upon generations. That's the influence that you were called to. It's heavy, right? It's like, whoa, Lord, that's way too much. Yes, it is way too much for you, but it's absolutely nothing for him. Remember when the 12 disciples were crossing the boat, crossing the river, and it got all crazy when, 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 when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and the other disciples were petrified in the boat? Remember that? What did Peter say? He says, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. King James. Lord, if it be you, bid me come. If it's you, Lord, tell me to come. If Peter didn't get outside of the boat, see, people say, oh, he walked on water for a tenth of a second, looked down, got scared. The fact of the matter is, he was the only one that was brave enough to get out the boat. Are you brave enough to teach in your household? Are you brave enough to teach your grandchildren? Are you brave enough so that your great-grandchildren will get it? Because they will affect or influence the future for generations to come, whether it be negative, whether it be positive, whether it's good, whether it be bad. They are going to influence the generations to come. You have a huge part in doing that. Her second superpower was being an example of love. Just imagine how much Lois had to love being surrounded by, say, three million Jewish folks that didn't, that, that didn't practice what she was practicing, that didn't practice Christianity. How many of you are Christian? I don't, know, don't raise your hand, but think about this. How many of us Christians have been around Christians who just <sighs> wear us down? My man raised his hand. He's like, I'm embarrassed, me. <laughs> right? Imagine what she had to deal with. And she did not, the Bible says, because of what it's in her sincere faith, without hypocrisy, right? It says that she basically saying she did not succumb. She did not succumb to the pressures around her. We can't understand the pressures in order for her to be an example of love, she first had to, to, to live it in her household, to love it and preach it in her household so that her daughter Eunice could get it. So that when Timothy was around, you know how, it, listen, it was probably the same back then. I mean, you know, that it is now with grandparents raising the, raising the grandkids, right? So Timothy was probably in her house a whole lot. The way of her showing that love was loving the Lord. The way of her showing that love was, was, was giving. The way of her showing her love was serving. 
The way of her showing her love was loving Christ first. The way of showing her grandson and her daughter love was by instilling the word of God in them so that they could, as I said earlier, Timothy, go on his missionary trips and take it, and they took it for generations to come. That's love. Love isn't always, I'm going to leave my children $430 million when I die. It's not, I'm going to leave you the big house in Miami. I'm not going to leave you the flat in London. I have none of those things, first of all, folks. <laughs> none of them. But that's not what love is all about. Sometimes we get so concerned with money and the house and the job and the education and the clothes and the looking good that we totally 100% put on the back burner. We compromise our grandchildren and children's lives because we're not focused on their souls. Truth is the truth. Have you ever compromised? <laughs> Have you ever compromised? Grandmothers, grandfathers, single mothers, single fathers. Have you ever compromised? Have you ever spent more time watching Jenny Jones? None of y'all gonna remember her because that was way back when. Raphael, what was the other dude? Raphael what? Stop playing. You all know. Stop playing. Have you ever spent more time playing video games? Have you ever spent more time watching Star Trek? Have you ever spent more time watching cooking shows than you have in teaching the Word of God to your children and your grandchildren in your household? If you've spent more time doing something else than that, that tells me that you don't care about their souls and you don't want to see them in heaven because teaching them the word of God is going to get them closer to you being able to see them again. My stepdaddy used to say, boy, I'm, I'm hard, but I'm going to tell you the truth. It was told to me that way. It was told to me that way, Right? When you find that, that uh, God sends you a messenger, do what you're supposed to. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for these last, last past 19 years, being clean and sober, because you know what my most favorite thing to do besides, besides be at my church and preach and teach the word of God? <sighs> Go get a big piece of prime rib. <laughs> Y'all gonna stop laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. See, there's some benefits that come with being a, an example of faith and an example of love, right? See, there are some benefits. I am a walking benefactor of Timothy, his missionary work, because it got all the way over here, and somebody told me about it 19 years ago. I'm a benefactor, the generations to come. We have that same responsibility. I am more than sure that Lois saw people with bigger houses that were more educated than her. I'm sure that she looked out and said, man, they're doing better than me. The word of God says we walk by faith and not by sight. These things that we're seeing don't make it true. There's a couple of things that I want you to do. First of all, I want you to teach them what you believe. Do you believe that Jesus is the only begotten son of God? Do you believe that only, be, be, uh, only through him and the washing of his blood you can get to heaven? What do you believe? Do you believe that there's another way to heaven? Do you believe that there's another way to be saved? What do you believe? Because whether you, whatever you believe and whether you teach it to them or not, if they're in your household, even if they see you anywhere, they're going to pick up on what you've given out. So whether you're trying to teach somebody or not, you're teaching them. 
Mark 8 and 36 says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to forfeit his soul? What does it profit your children? What does it profit your grandchildren? What does it profit you to have $400 million in the bank and your soul is going to rot in hell and because you left it to your kids and they, you, did, you never taught them the word of God, their kids going to rot in hell too. What sense does it make? I can't remember... Tim Tebow had a quote, and it was something to the effect that having everything means nothing if your soul's going to hell. Right? Remember, Dave? Having everything, it means nothing if you're going to hell. It means nothing if your kids and your grandkids are going to hell. It means absolutely nothing. It means that, it's, I'm fair, I'm fair. It means that you are too selfish to pray and instill in your children and your grandchildren what you believe. It says that they're on their own. It wasn't this quiet in first service. <laughs> the truth is the truth, right? Come on. Come on. The Bible says that we're supposed to tell the truth in what? Louder. I love you. I love you, therefore I'm called to tell you the truth. You love me, therefore you are called to do what? Tell me the truth. Amen? Amen? We are all called to live our lives focused on Jesus being the center of it and Jesus being the only begotten Son of God. And through him and only him can we have access to the kingdom. We believe that we are called to do good works for Jesus Christ. We believe that we are not called to this foreign land here on earth just to accumulate and get stuff. My wife and I, have seven children, that's wonderful because in first service they say, oh. <laughs> My wife and I have seven children. I was the cook of the house, always buying bulk. I was a chef in New York City when I was getting high, a whole lot of years ago. Um, we only have two at home now, 16-year-old, and one's going back to college on Thursday, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Stuff. So we're only going to have one at home and me and my wife, right? Why did I go out yesterday and buy an industrial meat cutter? <laughs> Stuff. We want all this stuff. I was saying to my wife, baby, we got all the, all the toys. We got, we got the Keurig and the, and the this and the that, electric flying knife. <laughs> stuff. We weren't put on this foreign land to just accumulate stuff. Yes, yeah, stuff is okay. We can have some stuff. But the stuff that I want to pass down to my children and my grandchildren is the word of God. That's, yeah, they're going to get the flying knife and all that. But what else? What else are you going to pass down? I live in a town where um, I am, I literally can see generation after generation. I can see the grandmother, the mother, and now the daughter all of them had children early, and all of them on welfare. You see that? What's in the house get handed down. It gets handed down from generation to generation to generation, so that stuff, that stuff, 
whether it be something like sexual immorality, drinking and drugging, right? Lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, all that stuff is getting handed down. All of that stuff. Pastor Dave is looking at me like, uh, you've gone over your time. <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to bring up the worship team if we could, please. Hmm. There are going to be so many people, so many people as, as you step up and as you choose to as you choose to step into your purpose, as you choose to step in, as you choose to say, here I am, Lord, send me. As you choose to say, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. You are going to be a Micaiah. You are going to be a Caleb. You're going to get slapped in the face. They're going to throw stones at you. But Lois, surrounded by all those people, stood firm. Lois, surrounded by all those people practicing something or not believing, all of those people waiting on a Messiah. She said, he's already here. Lois, a grandmother. Eunice, a mother. Daddy, not in sight. Church, there are some grandmothers. There are some grandfathers. There are some single mothers. There are some single fathers that we need to pray for. See, because we're held at a greater responsibility. We're held at a greater level. I know they're getting tired of me walking. <laughs> but they know when I come, I'm not meant to be in no box. You're not meant to be in no box. Where that dude at, that big dude? Stand up. Yeah, yeah, I call people out. I call people out. You're not meant to be in no box. I told you, I told you what the Lord told me to tell you. I told you what the Lord told me to tell you. Get in your place. Amen? You ain't meant to be in no box, so when you finally, you keep walking. Put up the slide after teach them what you believe, the Deuteronomy 4 and 9. It says, only take care. I'm going to read it to you. Oh, you can read it yourself. It says something different back here. Only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things that your, your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of life. This is the part right here, right? Make them known. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Generation, generation to generation. What you think you know, you're going to pass down. What you've learned, it says, keep it close to your heart or it'll depart. You have to share it with those in your household. Amen? Stand up with me because I have to, David's looking at me again. And 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, Paul says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Your children are going to follow you. Your grandchildren are going to follow you. The neighbor is going to follow your grandchild. There's going to be a group of folks in the school that are going to follow them. 
whose example are you going to have them follow? Right? Are you going to have them follow the example of Paul? You're going to follow, the, and, and Paul said, as I follow, follow me as I follow Christ. But I have to have a sincere faith without hypocrisy. Right? It takes time to get there. It takes time to get there. That's what today is all about. It's about what legacy are you going to leave? What are you going to leave? If you look all throughout time, children and grandchildren are doing those things that their grandparents and parents did. Whether they were good or bad, bad practices, they were handed down. Behaviors were handed down. Attitudes were handed down. Shortcomings were handed down. Everything is handed down. Have you given more attention to making money? Have you given more attention to watching television? Have you given more attention to things that your grandchildren, your children and your grandchildren should have? If you have, then that means that you've compromised. I have. I've compromised. I believe the Lord wants, and, 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 and I don't care if you think you've compromised or not. The only perfect one is Christ, right? Amen? I want every, every, every grandmother, Every...